As much as I'm loving this game, the problem I'm having making MWR videos is the constant thought that it isn't a new game, and surely everyone knows everything about COD 4, surely people will think these are dumb videos because they learned it all nine years ago. Well, I have to put that aside and realize, no, not everyone has played the Call of Duty game that came out nearly a decade ago, and YouTube wasn't really big back then, so there aren't many good videos out there. Therefore, I will just say that if you already know the answer when you read the video title, don't feel obligated to click on the video. Seems logical, right? Well, today I wanted to discuss the Perk 2 slot in this game because it is a very important one, of course, housing the two biggest perks in the game, Stopping Power and Juggernaut. No matter what you choose, you will probably be labeled a noob. Just have to get over that unless you're only ever going to run overkill. Good luck to you. I will say this, though, just to trigger some people. Among the elite, it is agreed that Juggernaut is the more skillful perk between the two. Proven fact, no kappa, come at me. People love to hate on Juggernaut, and I do personally prefer stopping power. Juggernaut does feel more annoying because it pops up when you're shooting people, so it's easy to blame it for dying. But your hatred for Juggernaut is not entirely based in logic. <laughs> anyway, at the end I think I'll also come up with ways to use the other tier 2 perks. They're not that bad, and if you're like me wanting to complete challenges, you will have to try out all the perks at some point. Alright, now you may have already figured out that Stopping Power and Juggernaut are very good, but you might be wondering just how much they help, and if maybe there are some cases where Stopping Power doesn't matter, because what if it increased your damage by 10%? That might help with time to kill for some weapons at some ranges, but do nothing other times. Well, that would be if it were 10%. Stopping Power actually increases your bullet damage by 40%. Now you can see why it's a big deal. Meanwhile, Juggernaut decreases incoming bullet and explosive damage by 25%, or 0.75, working out to around 135 health if you want to express it that way, although that isn't technically how it works. So they do cancel each other out, along with Sonic Boom, I'll add that in. Juggernaut does counter Sonic Boom and Stopping Power, while Sonic Boom and Stopping Power counter Juggernaut. By cancel out, I mean it's essentially like neither of you have any Tier 2 perk. Sonic Boom is pretty good by the way, and in fact I'll take a quick look at the other Tier 2 perks before diving into the Juggernaut vs Stopping Power stuff. Sonic Boom increases explosive damage by 125%, but more importantly than just giving you that number, it nearly doubles the lethal radius of explosives, which is an insane boost if you want to build an asshole class for shipment or something. Frag times 3 martyrdom Sonic Boom, ah yeah, definitely something. UAV Jammer is another great perk. It is the ghost or cold-blooded of this game, completely hides you from UAVs, which is very good in a game where UAV spam is extremely common and they don't get shot down. It just gets overshadowed by the big two perks. And in fact, that makes UAV Jammer even better because it isn't as common of a perk. A lot of people rely on their minimap more than they otherwise would in a game where a ghost perk is common. If they see nobody on the minimap, they'll be more willing to assume that there's actually nobody there. And that can work to your advantage if you give up stopping power or Jug to run UAV Jammer. That's why Juggernaut and Stopping Power are healthy for COD 4. If you take out those two OP perks, then suddenly everyone's running UAV Jammer, and that is not fun. You should be at a disadvantage if you choose to go with UAV Jammer. That is good balance, IMO. It's like choosing a stealth class over a fighter or a tank class. You give up some firepower to have stealth. Overkill has its usefulness for sure, you'll always have ammo and you can pack two weapons for different ranges, but that won't help in every game. Double tap sounds like another great perk, fire rate increase of 135%. This one also increases your damage output, but why would you opt for more recoil and burning your ammo quickly when you have stopping power right there? And then finally sleight of hand, which is a very handy perk indeed. Jesus. Yeah, it's good, but not great when you look at the options. So with that, back to stopping power and juggernaut, and back to whether or not stopping power is helpful for all weapons. Well, with that 1.4 times multiplier, the answer is pretty much, yeah, the COD 4 weapon stats are all pretty simplistic compared to modern Call of Duties. And nowadays, you see very specific damage numbers that all drop off to different numbers at three or four different ranges. In Modern Warfare, though, you have very basic looking numbers rounded to the nearest 10 and only two different ranges. Looking at all of these numbers, stopping power basically makes every AR, SMG, and LMG require one fewer shot to kill. A few exceptions to that are, one, the M14. It can deal 50 damage, so that doesn't just become a one-shot kill. However, the M14 does have a 1.5 multiplier for head and neck shots, not 1.4, so stopping power can make the M14 a one-shot headshot out to 37.5 meters, assuming the enemy does not have Juggernaut. Another exception is the Scorpion at very close range. It also goes up to 50 damage, so stopping power will not make that a one-shot kill, even with a headshot. Although, once you get a bit farther away, it will help most of the time to bump up that terrible 20 damage. 
And finally the M60, another weapon with that 50 base damage that does not seem to benefit from stopping power under regular circumstances. Of course it might help in some case where they're injured, but we can't plan for that. Out at 25 meters is where the M60 will benefit more from stopping power, making it a two-shot kill at all ranges, which sounds nice and consistent. But now I have to mention, before you start thinking, well, oh, two-shot kill out to 25 meters, I don't really need stopping power on my M60 class then, I'm fine with the two to three shot kill. Careful now, because you have to remember that some people will have Juggernaut. And then guess what? If you don't have stopping power to cancel it out, you're never getting that two-shot kill at any range. Now you're getting a three to four shot kill. With the terrible handling of the M60, you really want those guaranteed two-shot kills where you can get them. So stopping power remains a good choice even for those 50 damage weapons. Now turning our attention to the sniper rifles, it definitely helps with the body multipliers. The base damage is 70 for all of them, meaning if you see 1.5 times, that is a one shot kill regularly, and everywhere you see a 1.1 times body multiplier is what will become a one shot kill with stopping power if your enemy isn't using Juggernaut. Of course if they are, then it's back to normal because they cancel out. Now the only debatable use of stopping power is when you get to the two shotguns. Stopping power does work for shotguns and it is helpful, but you could make a case for it being not as helpful. Maybe Juggernaut is the more helpful perk for shotguns since you are certainly able to get one shot kills without stopping power while Juggernaut will always be helping you. But it can definitely be nice to help with the one shot kills, especially with the Winchester, to make it more consistent because you're probably dead if you miss out on the kill the first time. Now I think we've covered enough of those perks for you to make an informed decision. I do prefer stopping power like a lot of people, but you could make the case for Juggernaut because it also helps you with explosive damage. One thing it comes down to though, since they cancel each other out, would you rather be in a gunfight where it is stopping power versus stopping power or Juggernaut versus Juggernaut? Most people just prefer the stopping power time to kill. Once you get used to it, it feels better and more consistent to take people down quickly. Now I will do one more thing with this video and that is go through how I plan to use all these different perks because I did say, despite there being some clear competitive choices for these perks, when one of your goals is completing challenges, you will be forced to branch out. First off, I should mention the other perks really aren't a bad idea if you're playing hardcore mode. Sleight of Hand, for example, becomes much more viable. I won't be playing much hardcore though. So double tap and overkill, I guess I'll just have to use. Nothing special about those. Sleight of Hand, I guess, is most important for LMGs, but I'll just get that challenge done, however. Maybe on shotguns. Shotguns, I think, are how I intend to complete a lot of the not-as-good perks, because it doesn't depend on the stopping power as much. It is such an asshole class, but the main time I use the shotgun right now is on shipment domination, and Sonic Boom on that map is depressingly effective. When not on shipment, UAV Jammer would definitely help run up on people and flank with a shotgun, especially paired with Dead Silence. And I wish I could justify using UAV Jammer on a sniper class, but that is just a terrible idea. The logic would have been that because I'm going for camos on everything, I only really care about the headshots and I don't mind giving up any extra potential body one-shot one kills to more hit markers, that's fine. But Juggernaut ruins that line of thinking because I'm pretty sure a headshot won't kill a Juggernaut user if I'm not using stopping power, so I don't plan on running any sniper rifle without stopping power and I suggest you do the same. That about wraps up our talk on the tier 2 red perks of MWR. Maybe you already knew everything, but if you stayed here for the entire time, hopefully you did not and you learned something. Either way, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.